Good morning, everyone. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, November 4th. So, hope everybody's doing well this morning. It's 6.53 as I'm starting the video. Let's take a quick look at futures. And as always, on your video player, 1.25x or even 1.5x will be great for the video. Let you run through the material quickly and then pause it if you uh, see or hear something interesting where you want to take a note. Uh, equities are green across the board, not dramatically, but we just keep grinding higher. 0.3%. Uh, Oil's up 1.5%, but that was after a... a uh, rough day yesterday where it was down about four and a half five percent gold is bouncing back after a down day yesterday up 0.8 percent copper's up one and a half percent nat gas one percent uh, on the macro front thursday of course is uh, jobless claims day and then tomorrow we've got the big uh, october uh, big jobs report so that will be uh, interesting uh, we've got nat gas inventories, and then we've got an OPEC meeting going on uh, over in, uh, I guess it's Vienna, wherever they've got it going on. So uh, I haven't seen or heard any thing about that this morning, but they're uh, quite a number of hours ahead of us. So I would expect something like mid morning, noon, something like that, if they come up with any uh, production changes or anything like that. I'm sure we'll see it in the oil charts before we see it anywhere else. Uh, earnings front, uh, before the bell, Moderna, Regeneron, Barrett Gold, Nikola. And then after, after the bell today, we've got quite a number of uh, fan favorites. We've got Square, Pinterest, Uber, Airbnb, Peloton, Cloudflare, Skyworks Semi, and we've got an oil name, Oxy. Uh, speaking of earnings, last night we had talked about Roku. Uh, they pulled the rug on that. Uh, it was trading about uh, 310, something like that, uh, yesterday at the close. And then it traded down as far as 280. And now it's trading about 290. That's going to be a nice one to set up either if you're into... Uh, you know, trading those reactions today might be a good day to focus on that and see if they don't uh, try to buy it back up. You might be able to get uh, quite a nice trade with that. Otherwise, uh, it fits well into our bracket trade scenario uh, where you mark the high and the low of today and then you pick it up uh, tomorrow as a bracket trade following price either higher or lower out of today's range. Uh, some of those trades have been uh, quite good. Uh, they don't always work perfectly, or I should say they're not. Um, some turn out easy and some turn out to be frustrating. They're, they're just like any other trade in that respect. They don't all work, but they uh, when they do work, they're uh, often very um, uh, rewarding in terms of uh, you know being able to get on a trend out of a out of a move out of earnings. Uh, also, I want to point out on the blog this morning, I've got some information on seasonality. I've got a couple of charts on what's going on with Tesla as far as the options uh, going. I mean, it's I mean. It feels like it's turning into a GameStop kind of thing where, you know, just the dramatic amount of call buying is is driving the stock. I mean, I think it's decoupled from I mean, it's its own thing now. It's it's decoupled from the market. It's decoupled from fundamentals. And that's fine. Just realize what you're trading. And I make the point in the blog this morning, uh, if you're involved in it. Don't get carried away with yourself in terms of position size. Never get so big to where if your calls go to zero, like you're not wiped out. So 
uh, be careful with that if you're trading it and it's working. Keep doing it. Uh, also, uh, some charts on the relationship between oil and SPY, I think is interesting and something you should uh, regularly be aware of. Also, the breakout in IWM is no longer a secret. You know, we're not the only people with charts. So there's a lot of people focusing on that now. So <clears throat> got a couple of charts on that. And then I've got quite a number on nuclear. The uh, cat is out of the bag on that uh, uh, trade as well with uranium. Uh, I think the thing that blew the thing up was the uh, the release by China that they're building or going to build 150 new reactors over the next 15 years for a price tag of around 440 billion dollars and uh, you know uh, to feed a reactor you got to have the uranium so that's the kind of thing where I think you know team green is figuring out that uh, you got to have nuclear both the political class and the you know the green team are starting to coalesce around nuclear's got to be part of the mix you're not going to get you're not going to get home on wind and solar and i make the point in the blog today that you know just think of the spending that's on the table right now in the US we got we got an infrastructure bill that's 1.5 trillion really only about 300 billion is for true infrastructure the rest is add-on stuff and now they're fighting over the i'll just call it the social spending bill which is going to be you know whatever they can agree on let's say 1.5 or 2 trillion whatever comes across the line so that's 3.5 trillion and so China's told us it thinks it can build 150 reactors for, for 440 billion. I mean, just think of that. What, what could we have if we were to spend a half a trillion dollars of that three, right? Of that three or three and a half trillion that we got on the table right now? What happens if we were to say, okay, let's take 500 billion of that and really get on a program towards energy independence and uh, a much lower carbon footprint. And I mean, think about what we could have in 15 years if we were to build out a fleet of uh, safe reactors with new technology. I mean, it just it would be incredible uh, in my mind, just the, the thought of that. And I think that's the kind of thing we got to really sit down at the table and figure out as a country, you know, where we want to spend our assets. And then at the end of it, what do we get out of it? And I think, you know, refurbishing the uh, nu nuclear program, you know, carbon free energy, baseload power that you can, you know, just go to the light switch and you don't have to worry about the wind blowing or the, the sun shining to get that. And I think we can have all the wind and solar we want as add-on capacity. We're going to need it, but you got to have that baseload power and there's really no way to get home in a carbon-free uh, manner unless you adopt uh, nuclear as part of the mix. Okay. Fed yesterday, j Powell did a great job right from the playbook, 15 billion taper right off the bat. Right now, November, pre-approved 15 billion in December, and then after that, uh, data dependent, but I don't expect them to stray too far from 15 billion unless uh, inflation gets so crazy that they got to really just speed it up so they can get on the, the interest rate uh, bandwagon. But uh, uh, the market positive, positively responded after that event risk was taken off the table. We saw that 
yesterday afternoon. So taking a look at the dollar, no changes, still in the band, nothing to particularly be concerned about. Uh, Ten-year yields rose, not not appreciably. We're still in the band. This uh, head and shoulders formation is just there for informational purposes. Uh, it doesn't mean that I think it is one, and it doesn't mean I think it's going to break down. But the pattern is there, so I want to watch that. Um, I'm, it's my personal belief that interest rates will have a steady march higher, but you know we gotta we gotta keep in mind that we are in a band, and uh, uh, things can happen unexpectedly. So we gotta be aware of that. Uh, TLT broke down below this 146.50, but still above this cluster of VMAs where we've got the 20, the 50, and the 200 below as support. So uh, that's going to be uh, pretty formidable support there. Uh, they crushed the VIX yesterday. We're down around 15. Uh, you know, when we're down at this level, it doesn't mean we can't go lower. But when you get down at 15 or lower, it's like holding a beach ball uh, underwater in the pool. You can do it for a while, um, but at a, uh, at a certain point, it'll pop up, find a, a more natural level. And so we're down at the, you know one of the lowest readings we've had in a year. So let's, let's keep an eye on the VIX. Uh, Revisiting the oscillators, NYSE, more or less the same as it was yesterday. We're sitting at 34, not exactly predictive. The NASDAQ is starting to reach up a little higher. We're at 48, so 60 sends out the warning flares. So let's see how this week goes, and then we'll have to decide, you know, do we want to start pairing back on our uh, tech exposure because of the um, because of this oscillator potentially getting overbought up here uh, at 60 or higher and you can look uh, back in time at the all the locations where it reached up that high and then made a u-turn and it's something I learned a long time ago you don't fight Nimo. Uh, you can try, but you're going to lose. So why not just preemptively uh, use the indicator? It's been it's been so good to us. I mean, when you go back, look in time. If you just followed that, you wouldn't get hung out to dry on your exposure uh, when things get overbought or oversold. Here's uh, equal weight spy. You can see nice day yesterday. Uh, moving up, I mean, every day, all-time high. Here we are in the channel. I think anything north of 159 uh, keeps things intact. Spy two-hour chart. Of course, the big bar at the end of the day was uh, the last two hours after the FOMC announcement. And we just basically built out a a flag the whole day and then broke that flag and made an impulsive move higher. So, I mean, today you can just use yesterday's close here, 464.72, you know, give or take. You can just say 465 if you want. As a place, if you're not in to get long and see if you can get another push into the end of the week or if it pulls back i think in this level of 462 that's going to be a good uh place uh to buy and you can see it here on the 30 minute chart we're trying to make a move into the upper half of the channel and we've got that midpoint line as a reference and here you can see right at uh, uh, closing the day, right at right on the midpoint, actually, 
of the channel here at 465. And then you can see uh, 462, give or take 50 cents, is the bottom side of the channel. So if you were to get a move back down here into uh, 462 and a half, 462 at the bottom of the channel and at lateral support here, that's a nice objective place to try along. Otherwise, um, we would be looking for a move into the top part of this channel where uh, hopefully it can ride it higher and have that midpoint being support. Uh, equal weighted cues. We talked about it yesterday, breaking above this potential double top. Uh, all systems go. Burning through the bearish divergence with this breakout on PPO and RSI. Those both are breaking out and are supportive of higher prices. And you can see that price is starting to pull away from this breakout zone at 87 and a half. So that looks real good. Uh, here on the two hour, you can see that uh, we've broken the top of the channel, at least the way that I've drawn it right here. What I've also done is uh, drop in a very thin trend line off of this low just to show you that or, or to give you a, a visual key of a place for a potential, you know, turnaround. Because, okay, remember our, our general tenants. Once you break out of a range, you don't want to go back in. So now we have broken out of this rising channel. And once you do that, and then if you were to come back inside, then your first target immediately is the midpoint of the channel and then the bottom of the channel. So, you know, now we've made this move, we got to hold this move and then your warning sign will come on any kind of reversal back into that, uh, back into that channel. And here you can see a little, a little more granularity on that with the this little intermediate uh, trend line here. So, you know, for today, you know, I think 392 is your pivot. You want to stay long above that for sure and then be a little bit cautious if we start pulling back below. And I think, you know, were we to come back in here and lose... Uh, 389, then I think you would come back in here to uh, 386 relatively quickly. So you've got some very nice little uh, reference lines in here with this channel and rising little rising wedge here and the lateral resistance. There's some very clean lines that uh, you can use to gauge uh, potential areas of support and resistance. Uh, moving on to the uh, two hour on IWM. We've been following this, you know, along the whole way. Bounce off the 50, little consolidation, uh, bull flag at half staff. And then we get the big move uh, breaking out. Uh, and then this final bar here was, of course, the uh, uh, when the FOMC announcement came. So for today, I think you can, uh, if you're long, stay long. You can stay long against this uh, 236 level. If you're not in, I think you can uh, buy, a, uh, buy the breakout at uh, 239 and, and set your stop just below uh, you can see that we're getting overbought here on the rsi uh, i always use that as a uh, i always call that the power band once you get over overbought in a in a nice uptrend then what you watch for is 
RSI dropping back below 70, that's your, that's your warning sign because this can stay overbought for a long time. So don't get all panicky when you see overbought conditions. It can be good overbought and it could be a sign of real power. So you can stay long as long as your PPO is rising and your RSI is above 70. Of course, you got to look at price, but in general, this setup of an overbought RSI with PPO rising and price breaking out, that that's a bullish setup. And uh, moving on to the IWM30, uh, this is just, I mean, as a technician, I mean, this is just, I mean, just beautiful stuff. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you get involved in stocks that just don't respect the technicals. They're sloppy. They don't do what you expect, blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Honestly, during this big consolidation in IWM, it was kind of like that. It just wouldn't do anything. And, but on this breakout, you know, we come up, we consolidate, we break out, have a little Fibonacci pullback. And then, you know, on Powell, we get an acceleration. Uh, I had here the measured move of the structure was 240. We got a tag of that yesterday before it backed off into the close, which kind of frustrated me because uh, if you'll remember, SPY and QQQ kind of exploded right into the close yesterday. And I didn't recognize it uh, honestly fast enough. And what happened was uh, I had kind of um, uh, a lot of my eggs in this basket here in IWM and it started out great. But then in that final hour, when uh, SPY and QQQ continued to go, um, IWM really did not participate in the final hour. So, you know, that, that's kind of frustrating. But all in all, uh, you got to be pleased with this breakout. And like I said, um, now everybody's in on it, right? Uh, everybody that's looking at charts and paying attention have noticed the, that uh, IWM has broken out after a year of consolidation. So right now it's all about, can it maintain the power? Uh, is it for real? And do people, is there, is there actually a big rotation that's going to happen? And there's a graph in today's uh, blog That'll give you something to tell what's going on. You know, is money moving from the queues into IWM or moving from other parts of the market into IWM? In other words, is IWM just simply going to be a market perform or is it going to be an outperform? And the, uh, the jury is still out on that. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Uh, New visitors to the channel, I want to welcome you. I hope you're getting benefit out of the commentary and the levels that I'm pointing out. Uh, I certainly think or would like to think my work will help you become a better trader, allow you to focus on execution and not so much on finding a level. I think I do that very well and give you uh, solid guidance as to where I think price is going to go. Uh, It'd be great if you hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell and the like button. That helps me out. Also lets other people know that you value the channel. And then go over in the show notes. There's a place in, the, in, the, um, in those notes, a link to the blog site where you can drop in your email address. It takes 30 seconds and then you'll get all my content uh, no matter when and where I publish it come right to your email box and then you'll be part of the team and you'll get an invite to our trading room 
where we would love to have you. A lot of good ideas circulate in there. Good team of girls and guys. Pretty sharp traders. They pick up a lot of stuff that I would have missed on my own. So I appreciate having them. So uh, I encourage you to uh, join the team. And of course, longtime listeners, please do me a solid and pass the info along to somebody in your trading circle. Repost on Twitter. Some of you guys do that. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, post it in your other trading circles and and hopefully we can uh, build the channel. So, Facebook had a reach down. First bar of the day. That would have been a great place to buy. But otherwise, your buy point would be on the break back above 329. Now, today and this morning, I don't think you can do a whole lot with this until it picks a direction and a level. For instance, if price came back to 329 and you wanted to be in it, that's the place to buy. Or if it moves up and takes out this 334, then you're going to move into the upper half of this uh, big gap area. And then that would be a nice place to uh, anchor along with a stop just below this uh, uh, 334 area. Uh, Apple had the, had the nice move, which would have been Tuesday, came back, and then yesterday... There was a lot of flagging action before the announcement and then it popped back up here to this 151.50 level and you can see that that's price knows that's an important level why well you got a rejection here and then yesterday at the close we were price was up here at 152 and then closed right back on 151.50 so uh, price is definitely remembering uh, that whatever supply is up there is uh, still there. And so that's that's definitely your pivot this morning, 150-150. If it's above, you can be long. But as long as it's below, I wouldn't get long until it may be pulled back to 150. That seems to be, uh, that's going to be your first nice level of support where uh, you shouldn't be afraid of uh, taking a long there at 150 with a stop just below uh, Tesla. Uh, we have been following along this recent action where uh, we had pointed out that this 1170 area was good support. Why? Well, You've got one of the biggest volume over price bars on the chart. Actually, it is the, the biggest. So that means the most trading that's, that's taken place there. And then as we look at it, look at all the candles just along this whole line of either, you know, uh, wicking below and then coming up to 1170 or trying to go up above and coming back, you've got, I mean, there's got to be 10 candles there, right? 10 candles sitting on 1170. And so if you were focused on Tesla, you know two things. Uh, one, that's, really, that's a really important line, 1170. And two, you could put a lot of confidence in that line because price has demonstrated that the bears have no power to, to take it lower because if they did, they would have done it already. So this is a nice example of a little correction in time because price had gotten far away from this trend line and it just chopped around, chopped around, chopped around till it got to the trend line and then boom, it took off. So now we've got this breakout 
above 1210. And I think that's your that's your pivot for today. Anything north of 1210, uh, you can be long. And, you know, there should be a crescendo, I would think, you know, Thursday and Friday, you know, into option expiration. I bet everybody and their brother, and, and maybe even more than that, are going to be loading up on calls as they become a little cheaper towards the end of the week. If people were not participating on Monday, they may just come into the come into the stock uh, today and tomorrow just because uh, that's when options will be relatively cheaper because there's only a day, day and a half left. So anyhow, 1210 is your line here. Uh, Microsoft. I didn't really do a whole lot, just been consolidating here. I think uh, really your line of support is at 332. If you were to get a little pullback to 332, I'd be a buyer there. But as it stands now, uh, if you get a little move above 334, I think you, you can use that as your stop. And then you can use the bottom of this channel as more or less a um, well one it's a visual reference but also you can use it as a trailing stop because once you break back into this channel and grind higher the lower part of the channel will follow and you don't want to stay long if price were to come back and break that lower channel then it's going to most likely fall so if there's a a move higher this morning, you can get long and then use that as your uh, trailing stop. Uh, Amazon. This was a really, really neat uh, setup. Uh, I distinctly remember talking to you guys yesterday, saying long against 3,300. And, and just like Tesla, uh, we knew 3,300 was important because of all these reactions along the way, right? Well, first bar yesterday, you got a reach down candle that tagged uh, 3297, call it 3300. And if you had uh, been focusing on that, you could have gotten long at that point against 3300, which was a very, very objective level. And then just, I mean, literally sat there all day and watched the, uh, watch the meter roll over on your P&L account because it never looked back. I mean, you had, you had no shakeout candles. You had no retraces. It was just, you know, just grind higher and close almost on the highs. So you got 3,300. You closed at 3380. That's it. That's a um, you know eighty dollar move, and uh, that ain't all bad on a Wednesday afternoon. So uh, congratulations if you took that trade. Uh, really nice one. Now today, you can use that 3380 as your pivot point because we've still got. Um, what do we got? There's twenty. We still got about $65, $70 to go on this gap fill. And so, you know, anything above 3380, you can be long. Now, if there's a wobble and this pulls back to 3340, you can hit it there because just eyeballing it, I can see that that's going to be about a 50% halfback from, well, it is, it's exactly a halfback. Uh, you had an eighty dollar run up, and if it pulls back forty dollars to thirty three forty, that's your fifty percent retrace, and that would be a beautiful long if you got that set up. Uh, Google, um, not as active as some of the other ones. I mean, it's a good day. Came down here, uh, didn't quite reach this gap, but now that we're uh, in the middle. Uh, 
I think I can just do this here for you quick. I um, just wanted to show you something. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to um, kind of fumbling around here. You've got a level right here that I wanted to show you. 39 or 2925. I think you can be long against that level. Kind of like that where you can be long against 2920, 2925 and then look for a move back to 2960. And so, I mean, doesn't look it, but that's that's like $40 there. So uh, the, com the scale is pretty compressed, but by all means, if you didn't want to mess with that, set yourself an alarm at 2960, 2965, and then get long in blue sky because uh, look at the technical setup. Big momentum push, right? That was this. And then price has more or less uh, consolidated while momentum has come off and RSI has come off. But look at the posture. RSI never really lost 50. And now it's, you know, lifting off of 50. And now we've got that classic Momentum reset near the zero line with a bull cross forming. And what that's telling you is the excessive momentum has burned off and now has uh, regenerated itself, gathered itself, if you will, rested for a little bit. We rested mostly in time rather than price. And that's what you usually see in a in a strong stock or a strong market and now uh hopefully setting up for the next leg higher so google looks really good on a technical basis uh netflix i mean played out perfectly to what we were talking about stay long against 675 and now you're back at at uh, 690 so that's obviously your pivot for today you break out above 690 you're in blue sky and uh, off to the races uh, you can look at that uh, as a, a a more or less a fibonacci pullback right because you made this move here that's your a move that's your b move and then we are moving higher on the c move so I would expect a breakout. Don't doesn't mean we're gonna get it, but uh, definitely 690 is the level. And notice the uh, really the same kind of setup where RSI is strong, came down here to the 50 and bounced, uh, and now uh, momentum PPO has put in the bull cross. So that's those are uh, positive developments and our friend the semiconductors just keeps rolling um, I think you can stay long against uh, 281 ish right in that area if you wanted to go the extra mile you could drop in a little intermediate trend line that follows it up because you can see we're getting far you know we're far away from this trend and so you may want to drop in a little intermediate trend line that went up like that. And that would give you a visual reference to just stay long against that level in case there's any kind of a pullback. And you know, when you're sitting down at 250 and you start putting together these, you know, measured moves to uh, 295, it just seems so far out in space, but yet here we are, we're only, uh, you know, 10 or $12 off of that, um, off of that measured move target. And just right here at the beginning of October, we were at actually 
you know, mid-October, we were at this double bottom low. We were talking about this breakout and then a double, uh, double bottom target, which we met, and then we just kept going. So, you know, those measured moves are, are important and they often seem almost impossible until you get to that level. So it's been a really nice run. So have a good Thursday. I hope you got a lot of good information out of the, um, out of the video. And please go to the blog site today. There's a lot of uh, extra information there that I think you'll find both interesting and helpful. So have a good day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.